Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a hexic polynomial equation. We don't have to really call it hexic or anything else uh, because it's just six degree. But one thing to mention here, which is important, is it's only made up of even powers. That's very powerful because in the you know usual sense, no pun intended, maybe it was intended, uh, we can turn this into a cubic equation. So let's go ahead and set x squared equal to u. All right. And now we're going to get the following. We're going to write x to the sixth as x squared cubed and x to the fourth as x squared squared. So we get the following equation u cubed plus u squared plus u equals three. I just notice, I don't know if you did, but if you add the coefficients, you get 1 plus 1 plus 1 on the left-hand side, which is 3. So 3 can be written as 1 plus 1 plus 1. So is it possible that you are getting 1 from here? And obviously u is going to be 1, or at least u equals 1 is going to work. There's another solution. There's a couple other solutions that works. But let me not tell you that. Those are going to be actually really, really interesting. Okay, cool. So from here, we get uh, the obvious solution, but let's go ahead and factor this. By splitting the one up like this, we have one three times. So we can write it as u cubed minus one plus u squared minus one plus u minus one equals zero. Obviously you could subtract three from both sides and then that way you split it up. It's always important to check the sum of the coefficients of a polynomial equation. All right, to find candidates. So u cubed minus 1 is a difference of 2 cubes. So I can factor it as u minus 1 times u squared plus u plus 1. This is a very important formula. You should know this if you're doing algebra. u squared minus 1 is called a difference of 2 squares. That could be factored as well. u minus 1, u plus 1. And then u minus 1 at the end is just u minus 1, no comma factors besides 1. But 1 is good. So we're going to write it as u minus 1 times 1. Great. So we were able to kind of split up our equation and kind of factor each piece or group. But now we're going to do grouping by, did I say grouping? Okay. Factoring by grouping. So u minus 1 is a common factor. So we can take it out. And then the other factor is going to be made up of u squared plus u plus 1 plus u plus 1 plus 1. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this. And of course, that's equal to zero. From here, u equals one is an obvious solution, but the other solution is actually gonna be much more interesting. u squared plus two u, yay, I got it. Happy birthday to u, if it's your birthday. If it's not, then don't worry about it. Still, happy birthday when it comes up. So now, u equals one is the trivial solution. Okay, what does that mean? What is u? u is x squared, so we're going to set this equal to x squared. And that gives us two solutions. Easy, right? x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Those are the real solutions. What about the other ones? Let's take a look. The other solutions are actually, like I said earlier, more interesting because they are not real, right? They don't exist, but we can do work with them. Something that doesn't exist, and it's used in electronics engineering, uh, physics in so many different areas. Like how can you use something that doesn't exist, right? People say complex numbers and I, all that doesn't exist. It's just imaginary. You're just imagining it. It's not real. Okay, so let's complete the square. I can write this as u plus 1 squared, which gives us a 1 at the end, plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2, or you can use the quadratic formula. This is not factorable if you want. And from here, we get a negative 2 can be written as uh, square root of 2 times i squared. And the equality of squares gives us two solutions with a plus minus. u plus 1 is plus minus root 2i. Great. So if you subtract 1 from both sides or add negative 1, you get u equals negative 1 plus minus the square root of 2i. And don't think about... Uh, pi over 4 or 5 pi over 4 and anything like that. This is not a special angle because you're kind of looking at an angle whose tangent is plus minus root 2. So it's not one of those special angles. That's what, what makes this problem more interesting because we're going to do a half angle here by using some interesting formulas. Okay. 
So we have two solutions, and obviously you can graph them, right? Uh, they're gonna look like this on the coordinate plane. Negative one plus root two i is gonna be like, let's say negative one here, and root two is gonna be, you know, about 1.4, so it's bigger. So one of our numbers is like this, and the other number is just gonna be its reflection because um, the real parts are not changing and the imaginary part is just negative. Okay, so this is root two and this is negative root two. Uh, cool. Now let's look at one of the angles. I just wanna, for simplicity's sake, I, for simplicity's sake, I just want you to look at the uh, one of the angles, uh, which is alpha here, and we can go ahead and call this um, beta if you want. I mean, I, I don't think it matters. We can go ahead and evaluate alpha directly, but alpha and beta are supplementary, so their tangents are the, what is it called? Okay, anyways, uh, their tangents are opposites. Okay, that's what I was looking for. So real and imaginary. Anyways, so let's proceed. We got u value, but remember u was, um, not u were, u was what? x squared, awesome. Let's go ahead and set it equal to x squared. So negative one plus minus square root of two i equals u, and that's equal to x squared. But I just wanna go with one of the solutions. The other one is very similar. Let's just go with this one, how about that? So suppose x squared is equal to this. I can go ahead and write this number in polar form, uh, in cosine alpha plus i sine alpha form, given the alpha is a obtuse angle. So we can go ahead and do the following. First of all, evaluate the, and you can call this, um, I don't know, we, should we call this z? If you call this c, then the absolute value of z is just gonna be the square root of negative one squared plus square root of two squared, so that's gonna be square root of three. So I can basically take out a square root of three and write the number inside the parentheses as negative one over square root of three plus root two over root three i. And guess what? These numbers are gonna be, this is gonna be my cosine alpha, and this is gonna be my sine alpha. And as you can see, cosine alpha is negative because we're in the second quadrant, but sine alpha is still positive. Make sense? Now here's what I wanna do. I wanna go from x squared to x, so I have to find the complex roots. Let's just look one of the complex roots, shall we? Because the other one is just gonna be the opposite. You can negate it or put a plus minus sign. So to find x sub zero, let's say the roots are, roots are x sub zero and x sub one, okay? So how do you find x sub zero? So here's what I need to look at. First, I'm gonna check tangent alpha. Tangent alpha, as I said earlier, it is y over x, so that is negative root two. But I wanna go to tangent alpha over two, because that's what I need to do, cut the angle in half, right? If you're taking the complex square roots. So how do you find tangent alpha over two from here? And half angle or double angle, whatever you wanna call it, comes to the rescue. Tangent alpha is equal to two tangent alpha over two divided by one minus tangent squared alpha over two. And this is equal to negative root two. To keep a long story short, let's go ahead and call this t. t is good. And we get two t equals negative root two plus root two t squared. And if you turn it into a quadratic root two t squared minus two t, two t or not two t, <laughs> two t, 2t equals zero, and the solutions to this quadratic equation, without further ado, I'm gonna give it to you, can be written as one plus minus root three over root two. And if you wanna rationalize the denominator, denominator, you're gonna get these two solutions. So there are two values for t, and let's go ahead and go with the positive one. So suppose tangent alpha over two, one of the values, is root two plus root six over two. Now, what does that tell you? You know tangent alpha over two, so we're gonna go ahead and find out cosine alpha over two and sine alpha over two from here. We know that alpha is obtuse between um, 90 and 180. Half of that is definitely gonna be between zero and 90. So that's gonna be an acute angle. So sine and cosine are both gonna be 
positive. So let's go ahead and draw a right triangle, which is what makes this problem, I think, a little more interesting. And tangent is root 2 plus root 6, and I'm going to put a 2 here. If you use the Pythagorean theorem, I think for the hypotenuse, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to get the square root of 12 plus 4 root 3. Such a nice number, right? So from here, cosine alpha over 2 is going to be 2 over the square root of 12 plus 4 root 3. And sine alpha over 2 is just going to be root 2 plus root 6 over square root of 12 plus 4 root 3. Uh-oh, the graph is coming up, so i got to hurry up. So these are the cosine and sine values, and we can use them to write our number. So let's go ahead and write down x sub 0. x sub 0 is just going to be, so what is, what is our x first of all? Let me go back to x and then maybe clear this area and put the solution here so I can go back to the graph easy. Okay, cool, cool. Let's go ahead and find out x sub 0 from here. So we're taking the square roots. So x sub 0 is just going to be the square root of square root of 3, which is the fourth root of 3. And then this is cosine alpha, remember. Then this is sine alpha. So I got to cut those in half, and I already got those values. Uh, cosine was the 2 over that, so it's going to be 2 over square root of 12 plus 4 root 3 plus this is going to be square root of 2 plus square root of 6 over the square root of 12 plus 4 root 3 and multiply by i. Let me go ahead and carry this a little bit so it doesn't look like cutoff. So let's go ahead and move this a little bit down this way. All right, great. So now this is well, x sub 0 and x sub 1 is just going to be uh -oh, negative x sub 0. Okay, so those are going to be the solutions, the non-real complex solutions. And if you want to distribute the fourth root of three, you can get the answer in a different way. But do you like it? Can you believe this is this is going to satisfy the original equation? And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. And here's the graph. And as you can see here, there are two solutions that are real, x equals negative one and x equals one. The others are complex and they are very, very complex, right? Along with this, x equals one and x equals negative one are going to be the other solution. And if you want to call them x sub 2 and x sub 3, that's fine. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.